people often uh, think very narrowly of accounting as being uh, bookkeeping, and then they wonder what there is to study about debits and credits. But in fact, accounting is an information science, and we study more broadly the role of information in capital markets, uh, in uh, investment decisions, but also in contracts such as debt contracts, as well as managerial um, settings where we evaluate people, how should we motivate uh, people, and what role information plays in these contexts. And so accounting research tries to help us to understand these transactions and decisions. And once you actually think about it, you will see that accounting information is, is quite ubiquitous. And it's, I would claim it's very hard to find uh, a, a transaction or a, a, a decision that's taken by businesses on a daily basis that aren't based on accounting information. There are actually a, a number of reasons why you might want to tap into foreign uh, capital markets. One of the reasons is the, the idea of transparency and commitment in the sense that when you do raise capital from foreign investors, you uh, have to think about what their demands and needs are and have to play by the rules of international capital markets. So we typically find that when firms uh, tap into foreign capital markets that they increase their disclosures and the information that they provide. And that's sort of the transparency effect that I talked about. And uh, research has shown, for instance, that when firms cross-list in other countries, so they're not only traded on their home market exchange, they're also traded on a foreign exchange state in the United States, the New York Stock Exchange, then uh, markets would honor or reward this kind of cross-listing behavior with a lower cost of capital and more liquidity of the shares of, of the firm. Uh, similarly, there's research that shows that when firms um, are committing to more transparency, they're less prone to hit by cr uh, crises. So for instance, during the Asian financial crisis, the firms that were committing to more transparency were tapping into foreign capital markets were actually less hit during the Asian crisis. And another reason for tapping into capital, foreign capital markets is the idea that there's, may, there may be limited supply of capital in the country that you're looking at, and so the foreign investors may increase that supply, and there's research that shows that capital market liberalizations often spur growth later on in these economies. Firms may have domestic arrangements which may make tapping into foreign cap capital markets less attractive to them. So to give you an example of this is firms with political connections may be reluctant to commit to more transparency that is usually associated with raising finance and foreign capital markets and dealing with foreign investors. They may avoid the scrutiny that's associated with the foreign press and foreign investors. Even if you are making foreign finance available and you're liberalizing your capital markets, those firms may still be reluctant to raise capital in, in foreign markets or take advantage of those opportunities that have arisen from the, the capital market reforms. And so what you need f to go hand in hand is a political reform that changes those domestic arrangements and in th this case the, the political connections that these firms have to, in order to make firms to take advantage of the, advan uh, to take advantage of the, 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 the market reforms and the liberalization. And we saw precisely that in Indonesia, where firms, after uh, President Suharto had stepped down and handed over to Habibi, there really wasn't much of a change in firms' financing behavior. And it basically took the surprise election of Wahid, after which firms' old connections with the Suharto regime and Habibi were essentially invalidated, that firms then started to change their financing patterns and were more uh, likely or willing to raise global finance. At first, the idea that you wouldn't invest in a company that you think is poorly governed seems fairly intuitive. But once you think about it, the governance of a firm should potentially be priced in the share price of the firm. So to the extent that the quality of the governance is actually priced in the firm's share price, 
investors can essentially rely on the share price and, and earn a fair return on their investment. So the idea that we develop in the paper is that foreign investors are at a particular disadvantage relative to domestic investors in understanding the governance structures of firms around the world. Many firms around the world have very concentrated ownership structures. They're run by families or by large controlling shareholders. In addition, they have very intricate related party transactions and are a web of, of companies. Domestic investors can typically, because of their social knowledge, of their knowledge of the economy, have a better way of understanding whether those governance structures are in fact problematic, to what extent the families are running the businesses to the benefit of all shareholders, or to what extent the, the firms are run to the benefit of the majority or the controlling shareholders and those families. And considering that disadvantage or the cost in sort of understanding these um, relationships as well as governance structures, foreign investors are likely to shy away from investing in firms where they have doubts. The Initiative on Global Financial Markets at Chicago recognizes that the globalization has fundamentally changed the way business is conducted around the world. And if you think about it, there's been an unprecedented rise in in markets around the world that is associated with the globalization. Think of the uh, rise of the markets for credit derivatives, the energy trading markets, but also the flow of capital and goods around the world, the flow of people around the world. All these things have been substantially accelerated over the last couple of years and have given rise and more power to financial as well as uh, traditional markets, markets of goods. And so the, the initiative is about understanding the role of these markets, the functioning of these markets, and that's something that has a very long tradition at the University of Chicago. The initiative on global financial markets is very broad. It essentially spans three different areas. One area is international business, very generally. Secondly, it's the role of financial markets in helping and furthering uh, business and international business, and thirdly, the role of policy and regulation. For me personally, the, the, in, the involvement in the initiative made a lot of sense because I work in the areas of accounting as well as corporate finance. And accounting is, is actually quite an interdisciplinary um, field in the sense that information is used in so many different business transactions as well as business decisions. And so accounting researchers need to understand well the role of information in, in managerial decisions as well as in capital markets. Broadly speaking, my research focuses on the role of corporate transparency, corporate disclosures uh, in capital markets as well as in corporate finance. And to give you a couple examples of work that I'm, or research that I'm currently working on, there is a, a project that where we are studying the over-the-counter uh, markets. Those are markets that are outside the typical share markets like NYSE, NASDAQ, and MX, where uh, firms can be traded on markets such as the pink sheets. Those are the kind of shares that uh, we get spam email every day where people tout the stock or ask you to invest your savings in a, in a particular small stock that you've never heard of. And in contrast to the NYSE, NASDAQ, and Amex, the, the, the well-known uh, stock exchanges in the U.S., these markets are very lightly regulated. And our project aims to understand what the outcomes of such light regulation are, to what extent these markets are in fact more prone to fraud, uh, to what extent those, fir those markets produce efficient prices, and uh, in, in comparing and contrasting it with the more regulated markets in the U.S., we're trying to understand what the costs and benefits of regulation are, which is, again, a, a subject and an, and an area that has a very long tradition at the University of Chicago. What we're trying to do in this project is to understand what the benefits of adopting 
international financial reporting standards are to firms as well as to countries. There are great hopes in terms of what those benefits would be. For instance, there's the hope that more transparent standards and better standards would make these markets more liquid, would reduce the cost of capital to firms. But on the other hand, there's also concerns that the adoption of IFRS is for many firms just a label and in the sense that firms are adopting IFRS without really making material changes to their uh, financial statements. And so we're trying to discern to what extent markets can actually understand and discern differences in the reporting quality and those that adopt it as a label as well as the ones that are more serious as well as study the economic consequences of the adoption with respect to things like the market liquidity or firms cost of capital.